Social expectation drowns us all inside. What you have should be what I want, 'cause what I have just ain't alright. The clothes I wear, the way I comb my hair, how I live, oh I don't care. Extravagance and its remedy. Cut down on your expenses. That's one of the ways. One of the remedies, cut down on your expenses. Preface. In the past few articles, in the past few articles, we have reproduced many sayings of Maulana Tanwi, Rahmatullahi, on extravagance. The synopsis of these sayings is that extravagance means what does israf extravagance what does it mean it means that a man spends on heads that are not beneficial or the benefit that accrues is not approved by the sharia such spending is extravagance and wasteful money spent on birthdays and parties many customs are observed by us nowadays customs are observed by us and money is spent on them these customs include birthday anniversary wedding anniversary engagement celebration etc There are thousands of them, thousands of them. Even when an infant is circumcised, even then. While it is allowed to invite people, not no problem if you invite somebody, you feel happy, it's a happy occasion, you invite somebody. It's a mutam, you feed some food, nothing is wrong. While it is allowed to invite people, What is the reason? You must understand what is fiqh and why, why these invitations are disallowed. What is the, the reason, the sabab behind the non-permissibility of these invitations? We must understand this. While it is allowed to invite people, these invitations become disallowed for two reasons. First, they are considered necessary. They are considered wajib, necessary. I must do this. I have to do that. So when a person's aqidah and thinking changes, it leads to bid'ah. So first, they are considered necessary as though religion and deen is imperfect without them and there are thousands of celebrations now as the author mentions even when a child is circumcised that is an invitation big invitation so the first reason is because they are considered necessary and wajib as though religion is imperfect without them this thinking This thinking, this type of aqidah, this thinking makes them bid'ah. Makes them bid'ah because it is not wajib, it is not necessary. You feel good, it's a happy occasion, your child has passed some exam or something, you want to invite people, fine, well and good. But not as though it is wajib, it is necessary, it is part of the deen, deen is imperfect without it. And the second reason, which is even a bigger reason, These invitations and these uh, occasions are held that the, that the hosts do not lose face in society. So it's for sure, it's for real. That the hosts do not lose face in society. Or they want to let people know that they are up to date and they observe birthdays though they find it a burden on their purse 
The next thing is they find it a burden on their purse. So, so much money is spent in, on a wedding. So much money is spent on this and on that. Borrowing money. Remember that certain things are not disallowed and you can do without them. You can do without them. Certain things are not disallowed and you can do without them. If you borrow money to observe them, then they fall under the head of extravagance because you can do without them. Why borrow money? Today we have succumbed to the ill. A salaried person who barely makes two ends meet does not hesitate to invite 200 guests and will borrow money for that. This is neither farab nor wajib and it is disallowed and clearly extravagant and his purse has even reached there. Not necessary to get new garments on Eid, even for Eid. Take the occasion of Eid. Sharia does not bind us to get new garments on that day, no. It only says that the best available garments procured from lawful income may be worn. But people imagine that it is a sunnah. It's just their imagination. They imagine that it is sunnah to prepare new garments, new garments for the whole family for Eid day. And they will not be satisfied with one pair, but many pairs of garments for everyone. Though they do have perfect garments, though they have perfect garments for them, Again, they borrow for that. If a person is well-to-do and he buys a nice suit of clothes for himself for Eid or his family, fine, alhamdulillah. But you have to go and borrow for that. Put your... You hang your hat where you can't reach it. Again, they borrow for that. A man is compelled by his family to get new clothes for them. If he does not have money, then he will earn unlawfully by taking bribe or by cheating someone or he will borrow. This thing, Mufti Taqi Osmani says, Damad Barakatu, this thing has played havoc with our lives and the unlawful is not distinguished from the lawful. Everyone is trapped in the quicksand of anxiety only because he will not obey advice to keep off extravagance, keep off extravagance. One can cut down expenses. My respected father, Maulana Mufti Muhammad Shafi, Rahmatullahi, used to say that one cannot increase his income at his will. At will, one cannot increase his income. All he can do is try, but he can cut down on his expenses. That is in his will, in his power. But yet what does man do? Yet he pursues only that which is not in his power, he pursues that. And turns not to what is in his power, he doesn't turn towards that. Try to be self-sufficient. Man determines his expenditure beforehand he determines it and then says to himself that he has to increase his income. So I have to increase my income, which is not in his power. There are three ways out of it. He may earn money through unlawful, lien, unlawful means. Two, he may borrow from someone or tree, he may beg, beg for money. However, he must try to be self-sufficient and avoid expenditure of this nature. Rather, he must cut down on his own expenditure. Expenses must be within income. And this is all part of deen. This is 
Din is a whole thing. My respected father, Rahmatullah, also said that man must restrict his expenses within his income. He must eat what he can afford and wear what he can afford. As the elders, our kabir, they have a saying, cut your coat according to the cloth you have. One must keep within limits of his resources when he spends money. Today he cuts the coat and then looks for the cloth or grabs someone else's cloth. But you should cut your coat according to the cloth you have. If a man gets used to less expenses, then he faces no hardship in this world and no one can cause him hardship. An event with Mufti Muhammad Shafi Rahmatullah When Pakistan was created, the government of Pakistan established a board of Islamic education. The constitution of Pakistan was being framed and a board of the ulama was entrusted with the formation of Islamic laws, etc. So, Allama Shabir Ahmad Osmani Rahmatullah invited my respected father from Darul Ulum Dioband. He was taken as a member of the board and he accepted the appointment with the intention to serve. The Board of Islamic Education was set up by the government. Once there were some misgivings about the constitution and a minister was asked to clarify, but he put the responsibility on this board. This created further misunderstanding that the board had advised inclusion of certain disputed clauses in the constitution. My respected father, Rahmatullah, wasted no time in releasing a press statement that though the board was consulted, yet none of its advices had been incorporated. And he disclosed the shortcomings of the proposed constitution. Thereupon, one of the ministers met him and reminded him that he was a member of the board and ought not to have issued the press statement. My father said to him that he had accepted the post only to serve and not to do anything against his conscience. He said that he had in his pocket a letter of resignation that he had written on the very day he was appointed to be submitted if he was compelled to neglect his conscience. The minister reminded him that he had migrated from India and had no other source of income besides that position. And if he resigned, how would he carry on and live? My father smiled and said to the minister, the dress that you wear perhaps costs 200 rupees, but my clothing from head to foot has cost me a rupee and a half. So you need a high salary job while Allah will support me earn the little that I need. You need that. Mufti Sab says, spend with planning, spend with planning. Only he who is accustomed to spend little can speak in this way, like my father. My father used to teach us that even if a man's income is little, he can make two ends meet by proper budgeting. It may surprise you that as head mufti of Darul Ulum Dioban and a teacher of its higher classes, my father's monthly salary was rupees 15, 15 rupees a month. And when he resigned from there, his salary was 65 rupees a month. Meanwhile, while this was going on, meanwhile, my father received an offer of head teacher Sadrul Mudarris from the Madrasa Aliyah Calcutta. They offered 
500 rupees salary per month which amount was no less than 50,000 rupees of today 50,000 rupees of today while salaries in Darul Uloom were less than 50 rupees too my father responded to the offer with a couplet which meant meaning that one who has ridden a good horse will not ride an ox one who has ridden a good horse will not ride an ox this was tantamount to saying that he would not accept their offer after having taught at Darul Olom Deoband cannot go anywhere else would not accept their offer so he rejected their offer so my father subhanallah four families at 65 rupees he rejected the lucrative offer though he had a large family and he had many widowed sisters dependent on him his salary was not more than 55 rupees per month ending up at 65 rupees a month he raised four families on this salary and they were all comfortable he also left behind a very large library that he had bought himself he bought several books for that library books being his passion the worth of the library today is around a hundred thousand rupees a proper budget my respected father Rahmatullahi used to say that he managed everything because he was organized and that's the way of our cabin our elders it's a clockwork about them everything is clockwork everything is systematic everything is organized there's istikamat there's method he planned everything he had a small box subhanallah in which were envelopes with different markings like one envelope household expenditure next envelope fruit and money was set aside in these envelopes for expenditure on different headings every conceivable expenditure was marked on the envelope and expenses on that item never exceeded nor came down the amount set aside when an envelope had no more money then that item of expenditure was closed for that month Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed his effort charity was also determined my respected father rahmatullahi also had an envelope for charity Subhanallah. one thing is to give when you have plenty but when you have little and you also give him charity all his life he kept aside one twentieth of his earned salary for charity all his life one twentieth of his earned salary for charity if the income was unearned then he kept aside one tenth of the receipts as charity in the envelope with the marking sadaqa charity in short he achieved all things comfortably and we never mufti taki says damad barakatuhum we never experienced extraordinary difficulty he often told us that if anyone organized his living then he could count on allah's blessings too and he can utilize his money to optimum benefit but if he was disorganized then mounds of gold and treasures of Karun were insufficient because he would be a spendthrift a spendthrift a musrif a mubazir and there is no barakah and no blessing in that type of spending a lesson bearing event that we should remember for life especially children today who by way of inheritance inherit from their from their parents they did not work for it and so the saying as the saying goes in trinidad easy come easy go easy come easy go 
my respected father, Rahmatullah, related to us about the Begum Bazaar of Dhaka in Bangladesh. Begum Bazaar. Belonging to a great Nawab. He owned the whole bazaar called Begum Bazaar. This Nawab was a very rich man and owned many, many properties. He died leaving behind a son and a daughter who inherited all his wealth. One son and one daughter alone. They inherited all his wealth. One day, his daughter instructed a cloth merchant to bring to her some cloth. So the cloth merchant took several rolls of cloth to her home. She chose one and asked him to tear out from one of them a certain measure. When he tore out from the roll at her requirement, she was delighted at the sound of the tearing because they have a special art and technique how they tear that cloth. And it's some really nice. So she was delighted at the sound of the tearing. So she had him tear out another few meters, tear out another few meters, and more, and more, and more. And this became her habit, her adat, that every day, every day, she summoned the merchant to bring rolls of cloth and then to tear out from them because she liked the sound of that tearing. As for the sun, he once lit a matchstick and the smell delighted him. So he occupied himself day and night, day and night in striking matchsticks and matchboxes because that smell delighted him. So he occupied himself day and night in striking matchsticks on matchboxes. Soon, both brother and sister consumed all their wealth in these wasteful pursuits in Israf. Idhatul Mal and ultimately they had to beg in this very big bazaar. May Allah protect us from such things. This is a punishment for wasted expenditure. And of course, this is a lesson bearing event and related to us. To, to, in fact, Mufti Taqi Usmani says, my respected father related to us this story, which is really, really deep. As we conclude today, self-sufficiency, may Allah enable us to limit our expenses within our income. We cannot increase our income, but we can reduce our expenses. So we must do what is within our powers. If we organize ourselves and spend within our budget, then inshallah, there will be blessings in it and we will not have to resort to buckle, to miserliness. Self-sufficiency is good while miserliness is bad. nas and one is buckle. It is to refrain from spending buckle, miserliness as we close on this topic today because for some days now we were speaking upon the two sides of the coin, the two extremes, one was mokko and the other is extravagance. So, self-sufficiency, green and nafs, is good, while mokko is bad. What is mokko? It is to refrain from spending, to refrain from spending. When Sharia calls upon us to spend, to refrain from spending when Sharia calls upon us to spend or to curtail such spending as Sharia proves it is not to bring down expenses within one's income that is not buckle it is not to bring down expenses within one's income that's not termed as buckle at all 
our monetary problems can be solved if we observe these teachings may Allah enable us to abide by them wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen tomorrow we start on the next topic for some days now we were speaking upon these two extremes miserliness and extravagance subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallahu wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastagfiruk wa natubu ilayk subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun Salamun ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Social expectation drowns us all inside What you have should be what I want Cause what I have just ain't alright The clothes I wear, the way I comb my hair How I live, oh